Hello guys, S2W here as your average consumer with your casual consumer's review. Today, I have finally received the package that I bought about 2 weeks back from this video's upload date. The shipping took some time, but it finally paid off and got sent to me safely. These were a pair of shoes that was atrociously difficult to get as the stock levels for this particular colorway of this model was one of the lowest from Adidas. These are the Adidas Yeezy Boost 350V2 Zebras that I have here for a review. I gotta say, I'm thankful for the ongoing luck with the Yeezy 350V2 models by Adidas and Kanye West, who is the fashion designer and also popular rapper, songwriter, and record producer behind this collaboration. I'm in Toronto, Ontario, Canada, and we had to line up for raffles at the Adidas Original Store at their downtown location, the only location that had these. Yes, we don't have to confirm that yet, so the lineup here took almost 2 hours. Thankfully, they had 3 iPads instead of the regular 2, or else it would have been even a longer lineup. I took the L there of course. Online at Adidas Canada, surprisingly we had around 300 pairs of these, a similar amount to the V2 bread colorway that released 2 weeks before these zebras did, but I also took the L there. I left the queue eventually as a lot of sizes were gone, then for the first time in my life, I hopped on on Yeezy Supply, which is Kanye's official merchandise website. They only provided shipping for US and Canadian residents this time around, so I'm assuming there were way less competition and I was able to successfully cop a pair. I just kept refreshing the page when the password screen was loaded up, and after around 15 minutes of constant refreshes, I landed on the Yeezy page and immediately picked my size. Box wise, nothing much is different from the previous 350v2 models. It's the same brown box with a huge 350 at the top, it's like a sneaker drawer where you can pull the shoes out to get them. Now let's take a closer look at this newest colorway of the Adidas Yeezy Boost 350 Wow, of course it would happen on my pair. Hopefully I can clean this up and get the stain off, whatever this stain is. Now back at the review, these are the Adidas Yeezy Boost 350V2 in the white and black colorway, nicknamed the Zebras, literally because of its visual appearance that looked like a zebra. We have a base color of the white prime knit fabric, with multiple black stripes swooshing around the shoe. Again, prime knit material is Adidas' top of the line knitting technology in which it's famous for its stretchiness, breathability, and lightweight properties, so you know you're getting some of the best materials from its construction. If we take a glance at the lateral side, take note at what I'm about to say. One of the most prominent pop of shades other than the black and white of this shoe is the red letters and numbers that spell out SPLY-350. Rumor has it that SPLY stands for St. Pablo Loves You, but others have said supply, as you know, easy supply. No one really knows, but design wise, they stuck with the mirrored and reverse pattern look on this pair, the same design implemented on the Yeezy 350 V2 Pirate Blacks, released a month ago now from this video's upload date. On another note, this mirrored and reverse text design is the same on both shoes, whereas on the Belugas, it's red normally, while on the other color striped pairs, one is regular while the other is backwards. By looking at the outline of this lateral side, with the right lighting, you should see the staple stripe on this pair of the zebras much like on all the other previous pairs of the 350v2s. This white stripe upon closer inspection has some cream shaded speckles in between as well. Now you might be asking, what stripe? Well, it's because this stripe is white of course, and it looks like it's blending in very well with the same knit under it. But this is not true. The knit under is really not clear white at all, but actually a yellowish cream white with some clear white speckles in between instead. It's a very sophisticated design actually. Also, if you push the knit outwards from the inside, you can actually see many speckled dots in between the pores of the knit. Red where the text is, and black on the rest of the shoe. Another very detailed yet subtle and unexpected design. On the medial side, this version of the zebras brought back the prominent wavy strokes that created the illusion of a more streamlined skinny look found on the Belugas, the original 350V2 silhouette. Because of this contrasting colors of the black stripes against the white color base, the stripes will look extra crisp, sharp, and eye-catching. In between these black stripes, you will see a mixture of white and cream knits intertwined inside, offering its peppered look. Dead center of this shoe, you will see the iconic middle stitching running through the sneaker from the toe box to the tongue in a specific crisscross stitching also found on all previous Yeezy 350 models. And moving up to the laces, this silhouette came with a white rope lace that complements the base colorway of this sneaker. 
At the back of the shoe, this pair came with the latest design of the heels have introduced and implemented only on the 350 V2 Brett so far. This design was always on the 350V1s and was discarded and now finally brought back to even on these zebras. The tab is creamish white with multiple black horizontal lines running across the middle of the heel tab. And the back here also features a short rounded pull tab for us to put on the sneakers with ease. Again, usually we are able to see the stripe at the back fading out that helps with legit checks. It's hard to tell by checking this because the colors look so similar to each other, but the stripe here does go past the middle stitching and starts fading on the other side if you look closely. As for the midsole, they continued to utilize the translucent and flexible rubber plastic encasement that protects the boost material inside, which is Adidas' most comfortable cushioning technology famous for its soft and compressive properties, much like stepping on pillows. This midsole features the same vertical ribbings running at the surface, offering an aggressive touch to the overall design. Note, this is the first sneaker in the 350V2 line to get a white midsole, but for some odd reason, Adidas decided to use an off-white creamish yellow midsole for the back portion of this encasement. I'm saying this right now, I'm not a huge fan of this different shade. It just doesn't look right when the sides are foggy white, and then out of nowhere, the transition at the back into a yellow stain like I've already worn the shoes constantly for a year. However, if you do look closely, this also is actually made of two pieces. And this yellowish piece of rubber also acts as the outsole on the bottom of the shoe as well. Again, you will see a few boost windows that allow the boost material to expand and contract, allowing the boost material to activate its energy harvesting properties when there's impact against the floor. Through these boost windows, you will see a few pattern niblets that makes up the aesthetic validity of the boost material. Some have 7 dots in a cross configuration, while some may have dots in a straight line like I have here. At the heel area of the outsole, the word boost is engraved into the rubber, while the word adidas and the trefoil logo is located at the tip of the outsole for that extra branding. On the inner side of the heel area, you will see the staple adidas 3 stripes running down towards the midsole, much like on all previous V2s. The ankle collar continues to be padded well roundedly around the heel area for further comfort, heel rest, and stability. The edged area of this collar is actually protected by something I have not noticed before because on this pair it's more prominent. And it's a white see-through synthetic fiber that allows you to see the extra black and white patterns under it. Also, because I bought these at Yeezy Supply, on my right shoe, it came with a sticker with my shoe size on it. Inside the shoe, white removable insoles come with this model. The insoles have the Adidas logo and other text in black, while on the underside of the insole, there's these unique patterns following the design scheme of all the previous 350 insoles. It's a very eye-opening aesthetic that a casual wearer wouldn't notice unless you need to take the insoles out for a specific reason. Under the prime knit upper, you will see the familiar patches of suede surrounding the lace holes to give reinforcement to the delicate fabric. And much like on all the other V2s, there's a piece of thin synthetic fiber running parallel to the famous stitching dead above the center of the shoe, possibly to prevent the rougher stitching here from rubbing against the bridge of our feet. I think one of the most intricate detailing on this shoe actually shows up on the internal side of the lateral face of this sneaker. The design here is the inverse color of what we see on the outside, so the text here are actually speckled dots made up of black and white knits, while the fabric base around this text is in red. And much like the previous V2 models, there is an inner caging system under the prime knit at the forefoot area, which provides additional structure to the knit material around the toe box of the shoes. However, this inner cage ends right before hitting the midfoot area, so the prime knit at the middle will feel stretchier and more giving than the rest of the shoe. Anyways, here are some Adidas Yeezy 350V2 Zebra fit footage. Fit-wise personally, they still fit similar to all my other 350V2s. I have wide feet, so I go up at least half a size up from true to size because of the narrow forefront. The same size as how I like my Ultra Boost. Narrow feet, it's possible you can go true to size, but do more sizing research if I were you to make sure. Comfort wise, this boost is by far some of the better compression you can get on a boosted sole. I would say the ratio and softness is just about right that they come close to the comfort of the Ultra Boost. But because they have a narrow toe box and tougher prime knit, the upper is hindering its overall comfort. Price wise, the 350V2 is $300 Canadian at retail before tax, $220 in USD. And when you compare to resale prices right now, I will say it's a steal because when word got out that these were some of the lowest stocks of any Yeezy boost, the resale prices skyrocketed into high 1000s to low 2000s and really defines the phrase, the hype is real. 
First and foremost, I am glad to be able to add this into my collection, but truthfully speaking from a casual sneaker appreciator point of view, honestly in person, I felt the shoe gave a very replica feeling in general. I don't know if it's the color combination of the shoe or the overall aesthetic for this particular silhouette, it just feels odd or out of place in my opinion. The discoloration of the midsole like I said before doesn't help my case as well. These are authentic pairs from Yeezy Supply so I know they're not fakes unless Yeezy Supply sell fakes. They do look less vibrant in person than many pictures I've seen online though, which I do prefer it this way. But if I have to rank them, they are not my favorite V2s. I appreciate the design and silhouette still and I'm really thankful to add this into my collection but when I compared them to some of my other 350 V2s, it just didn't hit the ball out of the park for me. As always, throw me some likes if you liked the video and let me know in the comments if you were able to successfully cop a pair as well. More colorways with pull tabs are on its way apparently so if you missed out on these, you'll have more opportunities on the rumored all white or the all dark green pairs releasing in near future. And now, I gotta find a way to hopefully clean that stain off. That's it for today, S2W signing off.